In this tutorial, you learn to link a Revit model to 3ds Max. The Revit model in question is a monastery with its church, its cloister and several other buildings. It was built to be mainly viewed from the outside, so the insides of the buildings are not fully detailed. This Revit model is available for download by following the link found in the description section of this movie. To link the Revit model to 3ds Max, you can go about it in a couple of ways. You can follow the traditional approach by using 3ds Max's application button, Import, Link, Revit. However, it is a safe bet that if you are a Revit user, it means that you are an artist or a professional in the design animation world. In that case, you may consider using a workspace that would simplify things for you. Switch to the Design Standard Workspace. This is optimized for design animation workflows. Like all ribbons, it can be minimized or maximized to show more options. Make sure it is maximized. The Design Animation Ribbon is discussed at length in another tutorial on this channel. In the Get Started tab, you can start by setting the units according to your needs. In this case, the monastery was built using the Imperial system, so it makes sense to match the units in 3ds Max. The File Links button enables you to link to various formats, including the Revit.rvt native file type. Use this option, and then browse to the folder where you downloaded the monastery RVT file. Select it, and then click Open. After a few moments, depending on your computer speed, you are prompted for a few options. First, you are asked to select a Revit view to transform into a 3ds Max camera. In the old days of 3ds Max, only one view could be imported. If you are using a more current version though, all views are imported. Click OK to dismiss this dialog. More importantly, the Manage Links dialog has a number of presets you can use to sort out scene models. Once you have chosen a preset and linked your Revit file to Max, then you are committed to that preset and you cannot change it. The default Combine by Materials means that all objects sharing the same material in Revit come in as one object in 3ds Max. The material name in Revit also translates as the new object name in 3ds Max. Try it out. With the Combine by Material preset selected, Click the Attach this file button. After a few moments of computing, you are asked to set up parameters to accommodate the daylight system coming from Revit. Click Yes to dismiss the dialog. The monastery scene from Revit is imported, well, linked actually. With the mouse hovering over the perspective view, press Alt-W to maximize that view. The bitmaps assigned in Revit are not automatically shown, but this can be changed by enabling this option in the Materials tab. Keep in mind this may affect viewport interactivity if your graphics card is not fast enough. Next, note the object names in the Scene Explorer to the left. There's a top parent named after the Revit file, which is essentially a helper that looks much like the AutoCAD Coordinate Systems logo. Underneath that top parent, you find a series of hierarchically linked objects. At the very bottom, you'll see two cameras derived from the Revit scene views. There's also the Daylight System, which has its own hierarchical tree. The rest of the children objects represent the scene geometry, and the names are derived from Revit materials. For example, selecting the Spanish Style object in Scene Explorer selects all the roofs in the project, even though they were created individually in Revit. The same phenomenon applies when you select other objects, such as CL Stone 01. This object includes all of the monastery walls, even though they too were created individually using different wall types. Sorting by material type is a good and convenient method, but you may prefer other options. Unfortunately, once you have selected a preset, you cannot change it. From the Files tab, detach the current RVT file. 
the scene is now blank again. Go back to the Attach menu and link back the same file again. Follow the same procedure as before, but this time use the Combine by Revit category instead. This is arguably easier to read and make out. All walls are combined into one object, and the same is true for roofs, doors, windows, etc. Otherwise, the cameras and daylight system are treated the same way as before. There's one additional preset worth considering. It is based on this current one, but offers more subcontext. Detach the current file and reattach it. This time using the preset combined by Revit family type. In this mode, objects that are part of the same family type in Revit are combined into a single object in 3ds Max. For example, the church walls are different in structure from the monastery walls in Revit, and so come into 3ds Max as separate objects. When using the Combined by Category option earlier, all walls came in as a single entity. Similarly, most roofs were created using the same roof family type in Revit, except this U-shaped roof that was created as a suite. Therefore, it comes in as a separate object, since it belongs to its own family type. There are two more presets that I will mention in passing, although I do not recommend using them. Mind you, this opinion is purely personal, and I'm sure many would disagree with me. This is why I'd rather mention these options, just in case you find them useful for your own work. I will temporarily detach the file one last time, so I can get access to the preset menu, but I will be coming back to this mode momentarily. The last two modes I want to mention are the Combine as one object and the Do not combine entities presets. As the name implies, the Combine as one object option combines all Revit objects into one 3ds Max mesh. This makes it very hard to select individual components if and when you need to. The Do Not Combine Entities preset does the opposite, giving you too many objects to choose from. In this mode, every single Revit object translates into an individual mesh object in 3ds Max. This makes the 3ds Max scene very difficult to manage, unless you do significant cleanup work using layers, groups, or selection sets. Now that you have a good idea of how these presets work, you can choose the one that works best for you. For this tutorial, I think I'll use the Combine by Revit category option. One last but very important fact to mention, the whole idea of linking, as opposed to importing, is to keep a live link to the RVT file. This means that changes to the RVT scene in Revit can be updated in 3ds Max. Let's say you want to add doors to these two walls. In Revit, this can easily be done using the project browser to insert, in this case, the arcade door, old door, 8x6 model into the walls. Once you save the RVT file, and you go back to 3ds Max, you'll notice a red flag next to the file name in the Files tab. This is your indication that the Revit scene has changed. Click the Reload button to update the 3ds Max scene. Here, you can make some decisions as to what you want to update other than the geometry. If you have made changes in 3ds Max that you don't want to lose, such as editing lights, the daylight system, or cameras, then you would want to deselect these options so they are not read again from the RVT file. Similarly, if you made changes to the materials and maps in 3ds Max, 
and you don't want Revit to overwrite those, then you can explicitly state that you want to keep that material you have adjusted in 3s Max before you reload the RVT file. In this particular case, we didn't make any such changes, so those options won't make a big difference to the scene. You can also use this dialog to adjust detail on curved geometry coming from Revit. As you click OK, the scene is reloaded and the two new doors are displayed. The red flag next to the linked file name also disappears. If a time comes when you are absolutely certain that no more design changes will take place, you can bind the Revit scene to 3ds Max. This disconnects the link to the Revit model, but preserves the geometry already in 3ds Max. From this point on, you have an independent 3ds Max scene that you can edit and render as you see fit, or send to another system.